Welcome. I call to order this public hearing for the adoption of the 2021-2022 district budget meeting. It is Monday, June 28, 2021, and it is 6 o'clock. Item 2, public comments. The public hearing is being held to receive comments from the public on the 2021-2022 budget. Are there any public comments? Okay, there are none. Item 3, adjournment of public hearing. Is there a motion to adjourn the public hearing for the adoption of the 2021-2022 district budget? So moved. Is there a second? Second. All in favor say aye. 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 Opposed? Abstain? The motion carries and the public hearing for the adoption of the 2021-2022 district budget is adjourned. I call to order the work study special meeting of the Cave Creek Unified School District Governing Board. It is Monday, June 28, 2021, and it is 6.01 p.m. Item 1.2, roll call. All five board members are present. There is a quorum, and Dr. Monroe and Mr. Leedy are here from the cabinet. Item 1.3, formal adoption of the agenda. Is there a motion to adopt the agenda as presented? So moved. Second. It's been moved and seconded to adopt the agenda as presented. All in favor say aye. 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 Opposed? Abstain? Motion carries. The agenda is adopted as presented. Item 1.4, call to fill out forms to the public, and we do have some forms, <clears throat> so we'll get to that in a bit. Item 1.5, Pledge of Allegiance. Please join me in the Pledge of Allegiance. I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the republic for which it stands, one nation, under God, Item two, presentation of awards for schools and departments. There are none. Item three, public co comments. Um, I need to read an admonition because we have comments. According to ARS 38-431.01H, governing board members may not discuss or take legal action on matters raised during an open call to the public. The only allowable responses a governing board member may make are, number one, Board member may respond if there is a direct criticism of the board member. Number two, board member may direct staff to look into a matter. Or number three, board member can ask to have this item placed on a future agenda. Speakers need to be mindful of what they say when presenting to the board. Inappropriate comments could be considered slanderous. There are three of them, and so um, and uh, two people have uh, designated theirs to Krishna. Saunders, I probably didn't say that right. Okay, so you have nine minutes. Good evening, Dr. Monroe, governing board, community, and staff. Maya Angelou once said, people will forget what you said. They'll forget what you did but they will never forget how you made them feel. Right now, our community feels unheard and angry. Why are we even having a meeting about a potential performance bonus for Dr. Monroe when every prior meeting we are cutting programs and saying we have no money? Forget legality. Where are our ethics here? I am here today for one reason and one reason alone because I care and I stand behind our community. The teachers and families here within this district. I'm here to speak on their behalf. We have no financial gain. We have no political agenda. We just want answers and we want what's best for our kids. We can handle programs being cut. We can handle reorganization. We can handle hard times. What we can't handle is not being heard or feeling valued. As a result, and I know this for a fact, there will be a mass exodus. Our district will be facing severe loss of enrollment and us ultimately lower funding. And that's ultimately what it's about for you, Dr. Monroe, isn't it? More funding? I listened to the board's self-assessment 
I think only Mr. Fortney was the closest in getting right when he said communication needs improvement. That's an understatement. People need to feel heard. Last meeting and today's meeting are other examples. Why is the community not being looped in once again before we are making more changes? Why are people contacting me asking if I can help out and not you? I can tell you why. Because they don't feel heard. They don't feel like they can trust you. That's sad, guys. I have proposed changes. For instance, make it a policy that Dr. Monroe must respond to every stakeholder email and CC the board. Why is this so difficult? Why not read and answer community questions out loud and then answer them during the board meetings for all to hear? I know that an email was recently sent out with a list of collective community concerns. I'm calling on the board to force Dr. Monroe to publicly answer each and every question. Well thought out and actual answers, not a sloppy like copy and, copy and paste job with different fonts. We deserve that, come on. Finally, I really wanna talk about some elephants in the room. First off, why on earth is Dr. Jensen telling a Chinese teacher that she, as she was being let go, that one of the reasons the Chinese program was cut was because parents think that China brought the virus? I heard the recording myself. I was flabbergasted that someone in her possession would say something like that. I was appalled, I was disgusted. And most of I was sad. I know the Anti-Defamation League contacted you, Dr. Monroe. I know they sent you an email, and you haven't responded. Maybe some diversity training. Maybe you should respond to them. Also, why are we treating community FOIA requests differently for different people? What else is going on here, guys? What's happening? I really hope this has been a learning experience for all of you. I know it certainly has been for me. It sounds like at the last meeting you were sounding a lot more comfortable. I heard laughing and I actually heard some actual outside the box thinking for the first time and I was happy. Maybe it's because you felt the pressure was off. But I can assure you, I'm leaving so the pressure is not on me anymore. It's on you guys. I hope you live up to it. Thank you. Thank you. <clears throat> Item four, presentations, information reports. There are none. Item five, new business. 5.1, approval of 2021-2022 student handbook. Presented by Dr. Court Monroe and Ms. Gina Durbin. President Hatcher, members of the board, uh, Mrs. Durbin is here just in case we have any questions. But uh, as you know, in front of you, the 2020-2021 student handbook was updated and uh, for the 21-22 school year and there's been some additions and deletions that are delineated there for the board um, i will i will tell the board this is something that is done yearly as the board is aware i'll also let the board know that, that there are sections this is a living document so there are sections that will potentially be looked at this year one in particular is our homework policy as as we look at that um, moving forward with the new administrative team with parents teachers and staff um, however, at this time, the administration would recommend that the governing board take the following action and approve the 21-22 student handbook as presented in order for us to be ready for the new school year. So moved. Second. Other questions um, or comments? I just have a question. You brought up the homework policy. In what realm is it going to be reviewed or... I'm not asking for specifics, but um, as far as the current policy, why are you going to review it? Uh, Member Busby, I think uh, coming out of the pandemic and after some communications with teachers and principals, we would look at the policy and then see what language would eventually go into the student handbook to see if um, does it align with research, is it best practice, 
does it fit in with what we believe is best for kids and what works for families and so we have not uh, spent a lot of time looking at that homework policy and so I'd like to just examine it it's it's possible that nothing could change with actually what's written but um, coming out of the pandemic I think it would uh, bode well for us to look at that uh, I like to call homework practice because <laughs> it's what happens at home for practice what they learn in the classroom but uh, I think it also sets us up for success when we have similar guidelines from school to school um, if there are some disparities. So it, any changes that would come out of this meeting or, you know, the would they be implemented during this coming school year? Um, hard, hard to say at this point, Member Busby, depending on the timeline of it. Um, I, I, don't, I don't foresee a hard start during the year. Um, for me, it's really important that we have a lot of voices at the table and a lot of input for people as we look at that. However, if there was a policy change, it would be brought to the board. Um, but I don't have a timeline on that. I can't tell you if that's six months or December, but I think realistically for next year um, that we have some well thought out and vetted um, homework guidelines for our K-12 system. Thank you. And Ms. Durbin, can I ask you questions about the homework policy? I don't mean to put you on the spot then. If you're, um, I'm, I'm going by um, what I knew when I was teaching and that, um, for example, in third grade, there was a 30 minute recommended time just cap for homework, fourth grade, 40, et cetera. So gaining 10 minutes every grade going up. And the last two years I was in school, there was a, a big, it was a big deal at my school because of the disparity between even the same grade level teams. And so when I read that homework policy, um, it didn't really go address that per se. So I'm wondering if there was a change um, I don't know, you know, based on parent input or whatever, because I also had heard that it had evolved to the point where um, teachers no longer had to grade the homework, you know, assign a letter grade to it, and probably in high school, number grade, whatever. So my bottom line concern is two things. Uh, congruency across schools and grade levels. Um, and the second one is when you get to high school, if kids are um, not having homework, it, they're able to complete it in class and, and they're not really getting much homework really, that when they go to university, they are inundated and don't know how to time management and all that. And, and I have heard that from some of my past parents as their kids have gone up. So those are my sort of questions and concerns about homework. Well, uh, President Hatcher, I think in my experience of being involved with the student handbook for many years, the student handbook really didn't get into that much detail about homework. The paragraph that was deleted from last year to this year was a paragraph that um, alluded to um, agendas at the elementary level. Okay. That was what was on there before. But like um, uh, Dr. Monroe said, it looks like he's going to move forward and have continued discussions. I know being involved in administrative meetings in the past, that's been something that's been talked about, and it looks like he's just going to continue that, um, those discussions so it is aligned per grade level. Mm -hmm. Yeah, and President Hatcher, members of the board, usually what you see in that student handbook is a very pared down version of a lot of things that are in policy, maybe not as detailed, but a nice quick synapse summary for the parents. Um, however, just to quickly comment, you know, bell to bell instruction is really important in our middle school and our high school and making sure kids are getting high quality instruction. And sometimes there's practice that has to happen at home. It doesn't need to happen the last 15 minutes of class so they can get a head start. So we just want to make sure we're prioritizing our instruction and our kids are, are getting the best. So that work, work, that work will come about this year and what you'll see in the handbook will probably be just a nice synopsis of what that looks like as opposed to the full-blown policy. However, the policy will come to the board if there are revisions made. Thank you. Or recommended. Thank you. Okay, thank you. Any other questions or comments? Okay, hearing none, it's been moved and seconded to approve item 5.1, approval of the 2021-2022 student handbook as presented. All in favor say aye. 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 Opposed? Abstain? Motion carries. Item 5.1 is approved as presented. Item 5.2, human resource item, presented by Mr. Tim Weedy. 
Thank you, President Hatcher, members of the Governing Board, Dr. Monroe. The administration is presenting for approval the attached HR items. This item includes the request to approve the following items, and I won't read those uh, for the sake of time, but um, administration would recommend that the Governing Board approve the HR items as presented. So moved. Second. Other questions? Okay. Hearing none, it's been moved and seconded to approve item 5.2, human resource items as presented. All in favor say aye. 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 Opposed say no. Abstain. The motion carries. Item 5.2 is approved as presented. Item 5.3, authorization to exceed MO budgeted subsections for 2021 2022. Presented by Mr. Tim Weedy. Thank you, President Hatcher. Members of the board, Dr. Monroe, certain expenditures can create a situation in which a subsection of the maintenance and operation budget is exceeded. State law does allow districts to exceed a subsection of the budget as long as the total MO budget is not exceeded. Authorization to allow this flexibility must be granted by the governing board annually. Our auditors recommend that school districts obtain authority to exceed budget subsections without exceeding the overall budget limit from the governing board to ensure USFR <coughs> compliance. Board policy DBI and DBJ also provide for this flexibility with governing board approval. And this is for the maintenance and operation budget. Therefore, the administration recommend that the governing board approve the authorization to exceed subsections of the 2021-2022 maintenance and operation budget without exceeding the statutory budget limit in accordance with ARS 15905. So moved. Second. Questions? Um, Mr. Leedy, I have a question. Um, this, is, this is common practice, isn't it? There, there's nothing nefarious about uh, taking from line item, one line item, and moving into another as long as it's allowed by law. Uh, President Hatcher, that's correct. Yeah, yeah, it is allowed by law, and this is standard practice in many districts uh, because, and the, the example that I use is, let's say, for example, in the transportation subsection, it's a smaller subsection of the budget, and as, as much as we try, sometimes you miss things, or if there's something that exceeds the, the budget, uh, transportation is fairly sm uh, small budget in comparison to the MNO, so if you exceed that, subsection of the budget, you can just move money from other sections of the budget and it'll cover it. Yes. Thank you. Any other questions or comments? No. Okay. Hearing none, it's been moved and seconded to approve item 5.3, authorization to exceed M&O budgeted subsections for 2021. All in favor say aye. 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 Opposed? Abstain. The motion carries item 5.3 is approved as presented. Item 5.4, Revision to fiscal year 2021-2022 schedule for business and work study governing board meetings presented by Dr. Court Monroe. President Hatcher. President Hatcher, members of the board, on November 16, 2020, the governing board meeting, the uh, schedule for 21-22 for business and work study governing board meetings was approved. Uh, I'm requesting the October 25th, 2021 work study be moved to Tuesday, October 26th, so that uh, leadership may attend ASA Fall Leadership Conference here in the state in Sedona. Uh, Member Busby is requested. She is also the chairperson for the Kiwanis Scholarship Committee, which is so generous to our district. Is also requesting May 9th that that governing board meeting be rescheduled to Tuesday, May the 10th, to allow for the scholarship committee to honor the many recipients that we have on the class of 2022. Um, these are very limited availability dates at the end of the year because of the um, end of the year. Um, and that event's held at the Fine Arts Center. I'm also requesting the June 13th governing board meeting be moved to Tuesday, June 14th, so that our leadership team meeting can attend the ASA Summer Conference next year in Tucson. Um, so uh, those dates are listed there, um, and the administration would recommend that the governing board take the following action. Move that the board approve the change of the October 25th, 2021, the May 9th, 2022, and the June 13th, 2022 board meetings as presented. So moved. Second. Are there questions? Okay, hearing none, it's been moved and seconded. Did you have a question? Yes. Member Brown, go ahead. Sorry. Uh, more of a question and a, and a comment. Back when we approved this, 
uh, on, at the November 16th, 2020 board meeting, I had asked uh, at that time, we knew we would have new board members and that we would have a new superintendent. And my question to uh, then superintendent uh, Burdick was, uh, would the new board and administration maybe have a chance to review these dates uh, back a few years ago, board meetings were held on Tuesdays. That was the, that was the date uh, or the day of the week that meetings were held. Uh, they were changed for a couple of different reasons. Um, so I don't know if, I know we're approving, moving three meetings tonight to Tuesdays. Is this maybe something, uh, if the board's interested in having that discussion or if you're happy with where we're at with the rest of this schedule uh, as presented tonight? or uh, has anybody even thought about it or is that just me i have a standing um fourth tuesday of every month meeting so i i definitely would not be able to do a fourth um tuesday anybody else i've been good with the mondays mondays seems to still work fine so i mean i'm just changing everyone so often it's fine any other comments Okay. Um, all right, so uh, it's been moved and seconded to approve item 5.4, revision to the fiscal year 2021-2022 schedule for the business and work study governing board meetings as presented. All in favor say aye. 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 Opposed? Abstained? The motion carries. Item 5.4 is approved as presented. Item 5.5. Renewal of lease with Apogee Education, LLC, Bella Vista Private School, presented by Mr. Tim Leedy. Thank you, President Hatcher, members of the board, Dr. Monroe. This item, as you know, was tabled from the June 15, 2021 governing board meeting. <clears throat> the Bella Vista lease for the use of space at Desert Arroyo expires June 30, 2021. They have requested a lease renewal for two years, and the proposed lease agreement will now expire on June, 20th, June 30, 2023. The district in, did increase uh, rental rates by 14.3% in July of 17 to uh, $8 per square foot. And the district charges $1.16 per square foot for utilities, which has been the case for some time. And because of energy savings throughout the district, the actual cost per square foot for utilities has decreased. The current per square foot utility cost the district pays for that site is now approximately 90 cents per square foot and Bella Vista continues to pay $1.16 per square foot. The district requested an analysis of comparable square footage rates from a commercial real estate broker, and the broker offered this guidance on the rates for a portion of the building. And <clears throat> I, I wanted to update this because I got uh, an update from the uh, broker today, and I'm going to read that instead of the text that's um, that's in here. I didn't have a chance to include that because I just got it at 4.15 this afternoon. So um, it says the lease comps are averaging $13 per square foot triple net, uh, which means that the uh, tenant pays the utilities and maintenance. Current asking rates are coming in much lower, indicating a decline in demand for these facilities and or increased supply, particularly for churches at $12 a square foot. This would include the landlord pays the taxes, insurance, maintenance, and utilities. Uh, $12 a square foot would pay a portion of operating expenses and $14 a square foot. This would include landlord uh, taxes, insurance, maintenance, utilities, et cetera, with a portion of the church uh, or office at $8 a square foot. Due to the location of your property, 56th Street address, but uh, the facility doesn't have a high volume of traffic or visibility, Tucked into a neighborhood versus on a major street within a submarket, the prospective tenant renting a portion of the facility similar to the office component of a church site being offered for a lease at substantial discount, which is $8 a square foot. Uh, I think the rent of $8 per square foot is fair. So uh, I did have that uh, information today. Um, so in, at, at the closure of this, uh, she says, I think the rent of uh, $8 per square foot can be justified. Uh, the amendment to the lease agreement has been approved by our attorney and therefore the administration would recommend that the governing board approve the amendment to the lease agreement with Apogee Education LLC as presented. So moved. 
Second. Any other questions or comments? Mr. Leedy, can we can we back up a moment? The the phrase that's on the background that you just read, the the part of it that says lease at a substantial discount, can you maybe define that for me? Uh, President Hatcher, Member Brown, uh, I think what uh, they were referring to was that if if you had a church or a ch similar church property and it were be, it to, to be rented to uh, a partial space, uh, the asking price was approximately $12 per square foot. That having been said, I think the, the general gist of the, the email that I read, uh, just read would indicate that yes, uh, that it would be a substantial discount, however, that it is reasonable considering the, the space to be leased and somewhat the unique nature of a school district because uh, it's not really, it, it doesn't really lend itself to a uh, commercial space that has uh, either traffic or uh, drive-by or all that. So our, our uh, location, in, in my opinion, has two things working against it. One, it's tucked into a neighborhood, it's off the street, it is a school, and so it's a very specific or very unique uh, rental space and to find someone that is going to pay uh, what the at least the comps for say a church office building uh, or office space that were on a main uh, thoroughfare uh, it, it would just simply wouldn't in in their opinion wouldn't draw that kind of a, a lease rate okay maybe 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 I need some understanding on this item and, and bear with me for a moment Back at the June 15th of 2021 meeting, this board sat here and approved the facility use fees for the school district. It was the first increase presented to the board since the 2013-2014 school year. The majority of the groups, and I wanna say the local groups, and that includes Little League Baseball, Softball, Youth Football and Cheerleading, youth soccer, lacrosse, basketball. So if you, you, you look at all those local organizations just there, I, I'm gonna approximate that there's maybe 1,000 kids involved in those groups. And I would probably be safe to say of that 1,000 number, a very, very large majority of that number is students within CCUSD schools. So this board approved the facility use fees. These youth groups now, they used to be able to rent a field uh, during the daytime without lights, $2.50 an hour. That's now $10 an hour. That's a 65% increase. If you rent a field at night that has lights on it, say the, the multi-purpose field at Lone Mountain Elementary, that rental now is $20 an hour was $2.50, now it's 20. All the other facilities were listed in the, in the board book and for the public to see. Another example, the, the football stadium, the daytime rental was $15 an hour, now that's 30. So you've doubled the rent there. My problem is on the backs of our kids, We've raised these usage fees up to the point that the district got in line with the neighboring districts. I understand that. Maybe we should have made it a two tier or a step up and not take such a big bite out of the apple last meeting. Shame on us, maybe. But these are also our students and our families going to our schools that now have to absorb these huge increases for their kids to play sports. And it's not just that either. If you look at uh, what we approved also on May 10th, the elementary, middle school, high school fees, and now costs $150 to park a car at the high school. Well, we're not buying any new space and we're not putting down any more asphalt, but we raised the parking fee up 15%. 
club fees at the at the elementary and middle schools all went up. To 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 look at this lease without any increases in utilities or rent, I think is shameful. We're not in the business to offer substantial discounts after we just cut $4.1 million out of the budget, eliminated positions, reorganized the district office, on and on and on. To not have a utility increase since 2013, I wish I didn't have a utility increase in eight years. But guess what? My bill goes up every year, just like everybody else's. Now, hooray for us that we're on an energy management system and we're able to get some savings. That's on us as a school district trying to make the best we can out of that situation. You put the hat on of a landlord, that changes everything. We now also have to pay for the upkeep of the building, utilities, the grounds, so on and so forth. We are a landlord. And as such, we need to make sure we're charging the correct amount for utilities and rent that we're able to maintain that facility. Now, it's been said, well, we haven't used that facility in 10 years. That's true. Maybe that was not a correct decision 10 years ago to close that facility, an A-plus excelling middle school in the state for whatever reasons back then. But we spent bond money from the prior bond, $3,651,000 for 12 specific projects at that facility to keep it up to standards, to maintain the roof, to update the uh, fire alarm system, and on and on and on. There was also preventive maintenance done by our facilities department that was in the uh, report that we have to send in to the state. The last report was in 2019 because the state uh, passed on this last year due to the COVID. There's also projects done to keep the maintenance up into that building. So the bottom line question is, where are we standing that we can offer a substantial discount to a group or an outside entity that's none of our kids, it's none of our families. But two weeks ago, we jammed up our kids with this facility use fees increases that are off the charts. So I don't know where, where it comes in that we need to look at this, these numbers. If we're going to truly be landlords, then we need to be landlords and utilize that space accordingly. If we don't want to be in the landlord business, then we need to move forward with that facility. And there's plenty of options looking down the road that we can do with that facility. A lot of them that will be positive for the school district. But I just can't sit here and know that youth football and youth basketball and youth baseball now are going to have to go out there and do more fundraising, which means parents are writing checks to pay for the facility fees, but we're offering a discount to somebody outside of the district. And I, I have a big problem with that. And that's, that's kind of all I've got at the moment. Mr. Lee, were you saying that uh, based on those criteria that the realtor did, said that it would be hard to get someone to pay those more comparable rates is that why they said it was more justified to be eight dollars because it would be hard to find some <clears throat> somebody to pay 12 or 13 dollars per square foot uh, president or uh, member fortney president hatcher uh, members of the board um, I, i've got a little experience with this because uh, i was in a similar situation in the district that i was in prior where we had closed a middle school and uh, it sat vacant for a while and I had a firm come in and look at the square footage and said, at, at the time, this was uh, eight, eight or nine years ago, uh, came in and said, okay, the comps are around $8 a square foot. And so I had a 
group approached me about uh, leasing the school, it was a good fit uh, for the district because it didn't take, uh, similar to what we have with Bella Vista, it was a private school, it didn't take any of our kids, uh, didn't take any of our ADM, and the cost that we wound up negotiating on that school was around $5 a square foot. Um, it, a lot of it boils down to, uh, again, as I mentioned before, the specific usage. And to, to get more specific about your question, uh, I did talk to Mr. Santina today and I said, have we been approached by anyone in the last year about leasing space uh, at uh, dams, at the old dam site? And he said, no, we haven't had, I mean, we've had, we've toured a couple of people uh, that have looked at some of the space uh, in that area. And we've talked to, in fact, I think uh, Dr. Monroe had a conversation with Evit uh, recently that as of today, as a matter of fact, that uh, there may be the possibility that we, incre or that we revive uh, some space for them. There again, it probably wouldn't be, well, I, I don't know this for sure, but in my experience, it hasn't been that Evit will pay a lease fee. They'll come in and make some improvements and use the space and then uh, they will share the ADM with us if they get outside or even our own students. Uh, but I think what you have to do in a situation like this, it, it's, it's a little different than the, uh, than the facilities in that, there again, this is a very unique space. You, if you opened it up tomorrow uh, and said, okay, let, let's say that we said, okay, Bella Vista, uh, you're out of here. Uh, June 30th is your last uh, last day. Clear out. You had a vacant school. Uh, the possibility that I think that you would face, and that which is the the fear that I had in my other district, was if you have vacant space, you can't select who comes in and rents your space. Well, I think that there would be charter schools out there and some rather large providers that would see that as a ideal opportunity to open a site uh, within this community because charter schools like to offer schooling to in higher socioeconomic areas because if they can draw those students, they can produce good numbers and they know that. Uh, so that would be my fear. So I guess in a roundabout way, it's, it's saying that just be careful what you ask for. I mean, I mean, I'm not opposed to trying to get $12 a square foot, but to make to have the potential to lease additional square footage uh, at eight dollars a square foot is going to, I, I believe, is going to produce more money than leasing a small amount of space. Even if you could get twelve dollars a square foot, you're not going to get the kind of money, and you're running the risk that you may invite a charter school into your backyard. Mr. Leedy, has there been any conversations with Bella Vista regarding what we chart, what the rent fee is? Uh, President Hatcher, uh, Member Busby, yes, there has been. Um, we, we talked about the, uh, the increase that took place in uh, 2017 and the possibility of additional uh, square footage. One, one of their considerations is to over this next two year period is to develop uh, a, come back with a proposal and look at that site to expand the site uh, to possibly include uh, dormitories. There's a lot of things that need to be worked out uh, in order to do that uh, if we were going to entertain that. But uh, that's, that's one of the things that uh, came into the discussion and the possibility of uh, leasing the space for two more years, give us a chance to work that out and then bring a proposal uh, back to the board. So yes, it, it was discussed. And that if it was a substantial increase that they would not be able to afford that uh, increase. In, in their termino terminology, what does substantial mean? Uh, for instance, if you came back and said, well, okay, we think that the uh, the going rate is $12 a square foot, and even if you negotiated it to uh, 10 or 11, uh, and I'm, I, I'm speculating at this point, uh, but my sense was that if, if there was a, uh, you know, $2 increase in the, this per square foot price, 
uh, that it, there might be a decision to where they couldn't afford that. Where Foothills Academy had a school over on, on what was Mountain? it Cave Cave Creek and Lone, Lone Mountain? That that building's empty. So the comps that your person gave included that building. I don't know whether it did or not. Hang on, let me let me look and see if they included that in there because they may not have been aware. Uh, let's see. Uh, Sun Valley Charter School, but that was in 35th Avenue. Uh, let's see, here's one on Fountain Hills Boulevard, Thunderbird, uh, Hearn Road, and PV, 35th Avenue. Uh, I don't recall seeing Heritage Church. Yeah, these look like they're they're down in Phoenix. This is a church. I don't believe. I think Tudor Time might own there. that building. Part of that whole square. They're, Tudor Time's in part of it. Well, well I'm just they're curious. They're on the corner. I think they're part owners of that building or something. Uh, I'm just curious what that space would is rent for renting. because what I might you, be able to find out. What you're mentioning, they're comps, but they're not really comps for. Well, here. And, and that's yeah, that's one of the things that we ran into because I ran into this before because when you try to value a school in that space, uh, there's not very many comps that you can can retrieve. Exactly. Unless there's vacant charter school or whatever. Well, I, you know, there's multiple ways to to look at this. I mean, we have a tenant who obviously wants to retain this space. Right. But. The flip side is, you know, we have to maintain this space. And is one of the questions is what we charge in rent, does it truly offset and cover what our maintenance fees are for this building? Uh, President Hatch, remember Busby? I, I don't think so. I mean, I, it, I think we would need, in the long run, uh, we w it helps defray. But I would say, would it cover? I, I wouldn't think that it would because if it covered, we would have, um, when the, the air conditioning in the four to 500, or four and 500 wings uh, went defunct basically because of rust in the pipes, we would have replaced that. Yes, we had to replace the, the roofing and we've had to chase out some squirrels because they were doing some damage. But uh, does it cover the whole thing? I, I don't think so it wouldn't uh, it would, and I, I don't think it would ever cover it and the the other thing that you can look at too is that a an occupied building is generally better off than an unoccupied oh, building sure. because an unoccupied building uh, degrades in my opinion degrades oh, well, faster than there's a lot of reasons why an occupied building yeah. is better it lowers right. your insurance costs sure in addition well, you know, I'm not asking if this $8 a square foot covers maintenance on the entire campus. The section of the campus that Bella Vista rents, does it cover there? Whatever maintenance needs to be done on that <coughs> wing? Well, that, that, that's kind of a hard question to answer because um, there's, a lot of, uh, there's a lot of items that Bella Vista takes care of on their own. Uh, that supplement so it, it's kind of hard to say if where the break even is I mean we only get uh, between utilities and uh, the rental a little less than a hundred thousand dollars a year right now so that would go uh, a fair amount for doing some minor repairs and all that but if you're talking about uh, painting the air conditioning uh, all that kind of thing uh, it's it, it might be close but like I say, I, without putting a pencil to it, looking at it, I, it's hard to speculate. Of the 9,012 square feet that's included in this lease, exactly what does that, uh, comp what does that, at that Desert Royal, is that how many classrooms, is that the library, is that the cafeteria, is that the, 
the basketball courts out front. Um, what's the breakdown of that 9,012 square feet? Uh, to my knowledge, that's the front office. There's some offices in the, uh, and I can't remember uh, what, Don, what, what's the uh, specific well, use? The truth is we had use of, we used to be here, and our lease here included these fields in our area. We spent about 13 to 17,000 dollars to beautify this, and then moved over to Desert Royal the next year. Our lease included use of the softball field at the lower end, multi -field. How many, how many square foot, or I mean, what, what areas are you using? How many classrooms are you using, though? So we use what used to be the student services building, so most of it is not classroom usable space. You have three larger rooms in there and six small kind of breakout rooms. <clears throat> and so that's why we added extra space in the 200 building. We took more, two more classrooms there. Um, and then we donated all of our first robotics team equipment to the district two years ago, and we run a So just to come full circle and answer the question that was posed, the 9,012 square feet by Member Brown. So you said front office, some offices there in the front office, as well as three classrooms, some breakout rooms, and two additional classrooms? All right, thank you. Does that answer your question, Member Brown, on the 9,000 square foot? That's acceptable. You said you, you pay the fees for the, for the gymnasium. Are you considered a, a class two 501c3, or are you considered a class three group and organization not affiliated with the district? This is not the DFAC board. This is the Cave Creek Unified School District board who's trying to ask questions. I don't need a long, drawn-out answer with a sob story attached to it. Well, every group pays these fees. Every group pays these fees, whether it was before the old scheduled rate or now the new scheduled rate. 
So you paying for $10 to use the gymnasium, it probably should have been more years ago, but somehow it slipped through. That's not the, the question. Does, does anyone have any more questions um, for Mr. Leedy? You stated that Mr. Santino was had two was either was looking to lease some of that other facility or had toured, uh, given a couple of groups a tour of that facility. I mean, we weren't advertising that we had a facility space to lease, and who the heck was leasing and trying to do something during the pandemic? You couldn't even go to frickin' school here in okay. most of the districts. So somebody was gonna come and lease a school building, but we couldn't get in? I, I, I fail to see that comment have any sense member uh, brown i can i can answer that question uh, as part of my uh, trying to go out and communicate and network with the community i met with the desert foothills theater and one of the challenges that they had expressed to me was a uh, challenge to find space for their performing arts which currently happens at the pavilion and at the holland center and so one of the ideas that i brought up was to lo look at uh, we could potentially have space at desert arroyo i don't know all the ins and outs of theaters and so they expressed interest in coming to look at it so at least the visit that happened with me was a few months back where they came over just to tour the facility to see if there was any interest on their part to have to lease some space for their rehearsals or for their performances and uh, we haven't heard anything back from them but we just showed them the space and talked about some available um, space around that campus well desert foothills theater used to use our fine arts center they yeah member brown they they currently use the fine arts center because of the demand on the fine arts center from our high school and black mountain sometimes they don't always get their scheduling priorities so they're currently looking for other space for rehearsals and performances um, and so they were interested enough to come and look at the facility and tour it nothing has happened since then but they did come over and walk it with us and look at some space since we approved the new facility use agreements and not knowing what classification bella vista school is i don't know if nobody knows i guess uh, is there ever a chance to go back and look at the square footage, look at the actual classrooms that were being used and now verify to our own facility use agreement that we're at least asking the same of an outside organization that we are asking for uh, our own groups to and our own families to use? Or is it this rent and lease agreements just a flat number and we're all just happy with $8 a square foot? Uh, <clears throat> President Hatcher, Member Brown, uh, this stems from uh, a, a lease agreement that was drafted many years ago. And generally, when you have a long-term lease or longer-term lease, like a year or, or more, it falls outside of the, the facility use agreement, which is more for the sports teams and for the basketball teams and the little leagues and, and all that. So uh, it's, it's more of a negotiated uh, fee schedule that in my experience uh, that you have rather than using the uh, off of the the facility use fee schedule that you have in front of you Okay, are there any more questions? I have one um, is there still plenty of space for somebody like Evit to lease alongside as far as available square footage, uh, President Hatcher, uh, yes, there, yeah, there, there is. Uh, there's, there's quite a bit of space left in that building. Uh, the four and five hundred wings are still uh, basically unusable because of the air conditioning. Mm -hmm. But uh, depending on the type of program, there still is the library and there's the uh, cafeteria <clears throat> and some of the classrooms that uh, Member Walker. Yes. Thank you. Mm -hmm. Any others? If there was changes to the facility, you were using fields here when you, I, I didn't, whatever location, I know the fields are gone. They're the same fields that the youth groups are using that this school district decided would be better used to pave it over and make parking lots out of. Then why haven't those items come back into negotiations with the lease to remove them from the lease? 
If, if he was paying to use a field that doesn't exist anymore, how, why is that still in the lease? President Hatch, Member Brown, I'm not sure I can answer that question because uh, this is just the, the lease uh, amendment. And I think at this point, uh, to my knowledge, he's only paying for the 9,012 uh, square feet of the space that was aforementioned. Oh, Mr. Brown said that he was paying for a field that doesn't exist anymore, so. Wait, excuse me. Um, I'm not sure we can do back and forth because you weren't on the agenda for a presentation. Any other questions? Okay. No, I think I'm... I I'm done with it tonight, but it's going to come back up. Okay. Anybody else? All right. Hearing no more questions, it's been moved and seconded to approve item 5.5, renewal of lease with Apogee Education, LLC, Bella Vista Private School as presented. All in favor say aye. 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 Opposed? Nay. Abstain? The motion carries. Item 5.5 is approved as presented. Item 5.6, renewal of lease with Bell of Fidel, Thank presented you, by Mr. Tim Leedy. Thank you, President Hatcher, members of the board, Dr. Monroe. <clears throat> this item was also tabled at the June 15th, 2021 governing board meeting. Bella Fidel's lease for the used space at Desert Arroyo expires on June 30th, 2021. She has requested a lease renewal and the lease renewal will be for two years and will have the same terms as the lease agreement dated December 20th, 2018. The attachment represents the terms of the proposed lease agreement amendment, which will now expire on June 30th, 2023. Uh, and this amendment to the lease agreement has been approved by attorney. Uh, it, just as a footnote to this one, um, the, the rental rate on this uh, square footage is $7 a square foot and uh, this is the same square footage. It's one classroom uh, that has been the same since uh, 2019. And I believe, and there, uh, there was a, uh, I, I guess it was an unwritten agreement. Uh, well, it was written in the lease, but uh, at the time that uh, it was negotiated, it has stayed the same through the uh, 19 and the 20 uh, square footages based on uh, input that I've received from the prior administration. So uh, therefore, administration would recommend that the governing board approve the amendment to the lease agreement with Bella Fidel as presented. So moved. Second. Questions? No, no questions? I'm sorry, no. I. No, uh, it would be the same answers that we just received. So no, I have no questions on this item. Okay, anybody else? All right, hearing none, it's been moved and seconded to approve item 5.6, renewal of the lease with Bella Fidel as presented. All in favor say aye. 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 Opposed? Abstain? I, I want to explain my aye vote though. Um, I'm, I, am, I understand what, uh, member brown is saying and i think he brings up some really good points um i voted i because i think uh bella vista has acted in good faith and i think that uh perhaps the district needs to uh do some investigation in the next couple of years before the lease comes up again so under those circumstances i'm voting i um the motion carries. Item 5.6 is approved as presented. Item 5.7, approval of the gifted uh, scope and sequence presented by Dr. Court Monroe. President Hatcher, members of the board, this uh, item was tabled at the June 15th governing board meeting. It's being brought back to the board for approval this evening. This was uh, the item where I, I had uploaded an older version of the document. So the current document that the board has has been reformatted so that the bottom few tables would appear 
all the board's concerns were updated and there was another sentence that was added to the effective needs portion as well. As required by districts participating in the Elementary and Secondary Education Act, Cave Creek Unified is required to complete a self-assessment annually to ensure that programs are in compliance with all applicable statutes, regulations, and applications. As part of the Cycle 5 monitoring, which is what we're in right now, the instrument for ESEA, the board will be asked to approve this revised gifted scope and sequence. So the administration would recommend that the government board take the following action and approve the gifted scope and sequence as presented. So moved. Second. Questions? Discussion? All right, hearing none, it's been moved and seconded to approve item 5.7, uh, approval of the gifted scope and sequence as presented. All in favor say aye. 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 Opposed? Abstain? Motion carries. Item 5.7 is approved as presented. Item 6, old business, 6.1, approval of the district budget for 2021-2022, presented by Mr. Tim Leedy, and is this your last presentation? <laughs> this is my last presentation, <laughs> my last hurrah. Thank you, President Hatcher, members of the board, Dr. Monroe. Uh, the budget being presented for adoption has not changed since it was proposed on June 15th. The notice of public hearing and the budget summary were both posted on June 16th, 2021 on the Arizona Department of Education's website and a link for the Arizona Department of Education website was posted on June 16th as well on the CCUSD webpage. Um, as I mentioned in the agenda item on June 15th, uh, this, this budget that you have before you tonight is basically just in compliance with the dates. Uh, for submitting the budget and once the legislature completes the legislative cycle and we get the final information as far as the uh, per student amounts and and the other allocations uh, for capital on September 15th or on or before September 15th um, Ms. Rodriguez will be bringing you a budget to uh, capture those new numbers and we're estimating somewhere in the range of about a half million dollars that it will go up uh, and, and again, that will depend on the student count as well. So um, the administration would recommend that the governing board adopt the 2021-2022 budget as presented. So moved. Second. Questions? Um, can you just please scoot that page up? I just want to make sure those dates are, that one, uh, those two dates are correct. The, those oh, dates were changed. I I did. Um, well, no, th these were the uh, where we posted it. So it will be posted tomorrow. Uh, and I for the signature page when you're discussing the evaluation, I can go get the signature page and replace it for the adopted budget. So rather than uh, July 28th, it'll say June 28th. That's yeah. correct. Okay, thank right. you. All right. Uh, any more questions for Mr. Leedy? All right. Hearing none, it's been moved and seconded to approve item 6.1, approval of the district budget for 2021-2022 as presented. All in favor say aye. 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 Opposed? Abstained? The motion carries. Item 6.1 is approved as presented. Item 7, future agenda items. There are none. Item 8, executive session. Per ARS 38-431.03.A, Point one, discussion or consideration of employment, assignment, appointment, promotion, demotion, dismissal, salaries, disciplining or resignation of a public officer, appointee or employee of any public body, except that with the exception of salary discussions, an officer, appointee or employee may demand that the discussion or consideration occur at a public meeting. Superintendent's summative evaluation and discussion regarding performance-based pay. So I move to recess the public meeting and move into executive session for the purpose of discussing Dr. Monroe's summative evaluation and performance-based pay. Is there a second? Second. second. All in favor say aye. 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 Opposed? Abstain? The motion carries. The governing board will move into executive session.
many how many square foot or I mean what what areas are you using? How many classrooms are you using though? So we use the classrooms to be the student services building, so most of it is not classroom usable space. You have three larger rooms in there and six small kind of breakout rooms. <clears throat> and so that's why we added extra space in the two hundred building. We took more two more classrooms there. Um, and then we donated all of our first robotics team equipment to the district two years ago. And we run a, a joint district and school first robotics team that was very successful last year. They got the Inspiration Award there. Um, and so, uh, and the gym, when I'm here in these facilities, by the way, we've been paying that rate ever since. We've been paying that rate, you guys talked about the gym. We've been paying that rate ever since 2010. So it may be an increase to other people, but I've been paying that rate forever. And our lease actually says that my utilities are supposed to be recalculated based on actual usage. So we've been paying more. And we were locked down in March of 2020. We couldn't pay rent from March of 2020 until September of 2020 without being able to use any facilities or run a business. So that's kind of where I'm at. So just to come full circle and answer the question that was posed, the 9,012 square feet by Member Brown. So you said front office, some offices there in the front office, as well as three classrooms, some breakout rooms, and two additional classrooms? Yeah, three classrooms, uh, some breakout rooms, two additional class classrooms on the outside, and then there's two and the 300, the 200. <clears throat> when we first moved over there, we were in the 300 building. No, we've never had a PI, so we painted the whole 300 building, we painted the 200 building. When we moved into the 600 building, we painted that whole building. And the classrooms were in the 200, those were painted for for the school and our school, so we didn't have to paint those. But we do all of our own upgrades. Oh. To the all right, thank you. Does that answer your question, Member Brown, on the 9,000 square foot? That's acceptable. You said you you pay the fees for the for the gymnasium. Are you considered a a class two, five hundred one c three, or are you considered a class three group and organization not affiliated with the district? I have a rate in my contract, but I do have a nonprofit. I'm citizen of a nonprofit, but I didn't just use the rate that I had in the contract. Okay. Uh, but yeah, it's it's a This is not the DFAC board. This is the Cave Creek Unified School District board who's trying to ask questions. I don't need a long, drawn-out answer with a sob story attached to it. Every group pays these fees. Every group pays these fees, whether it was before the old scheduled rate or now the new scheduled rate. So you pay in for $10 to use the gymnasium. It probably should have been more years ago, but somehow it slipped through. That's not the, the question. Does, does anyone have any more questions um, for Mr. Leedy? You stated that Mr. Santina was, had two, was either was looking to lease some of that other facility or had toured, uh, given a couple of groups a tour of that facility. I mean, we weren't advertising that we had a facility space to lease, and who the heck was leasing and trying to do something during the pandemic? You couldn't even go to frickin' school here in okay. most of the districts. So somebody was going to come and lease a school building, but we couldn't get in? I, I, I fail to see that comment have any sense. Member uh, Brown, I can, I can answer that question uh, as part of my... Uh, trying to go out and communicate and network with the community. I met with the Desert Foothills Theater, and one of the challenges that they had expressed to me was a uh, challenge to find space for their performing arts, which 
currently happens at the pavilion and at the Holland Center. And so one of the ideas that I brought up was to lo look at, uh, we could potentially have space at Desert Arroyo. I don't know all the ins and outs of theaters. And so they expressed interest in coming to look at it. So at least the visit that happened with me was a few months back where they came over just to tour the facility to see if there was any interest on their part to have to lease some space for their rehearsals or for their performances and uh, we haven't heard anything back from them but we just showed them the space and talked about some available um, space around that campus well desert foothills theater used to use our fine arts center they yeah member brown they they currently use the fine art center because of the demand on the fine arts center from our high school and black mountain sometimes they don't always get their scheduling priorities so they're currently looking for other space for rehearsals and performances um, and so they were interested enough to come and look at the facility and tour it nothing has happened since then but they did come over and walk it with us and look at some space since we approved the new facility use agreements and not knowing what classification bella vista school is i don't know if nobody knows i guess is there ever a chance to go back and look at the square footage, look at the actual classrooms that were being used and now verify to our own facility use agreement that we're at least asking the same of an outside organization that we are asking for uh, our own groups to and our own families to use? Or is it this rent and lease agreements just a flat number and we're all just happy with $8 a square foot? Uh, <clears throat> President Hatch, Member Brown, uh, this stems from uh, a, a lease agreement that was drafted many years ago. And generally, when you have a long-term lease or longer-term lease, like a year or, or more, it falls outside of the, the facility use agreement, which is more for the sports teams and for the basketball teams and the little leagues and, and all that. So uh, it's, it's more of a negotiated uh, fee schedule that in my experience uh, that you have rather than using the uh, off of the the facility use fee schedule that you have in front of you Okay, are there any more questions? I have one um, is there still plenty of space for somebody like Evit to lease alongside as far as available square footage, uh, President Hatcher, uh, yes, there, yeah, there, there is. Uh, there's, there's quite a bit of space left in that building. Uh, the four and five hundred wings are still uh, basically unusable because of the air conditioning. Mm -hmm. But uh, depending on the type of program, there still is the library and there's the uh, cafeteria <clears throat> and some of the classrooms that uh, Member Walker is. Thank you. Mm -hmm. Any others? If there was changes to the facility, you were using fields here when you, I, I didn't, whatever location, I know the fields are gone. They're the same fields that the youth groups are using that this school district decided would be better used to pave it over and make parking lots out of. Then why haven't those items come back into negotiations with the lease to remove them from the lease? If, if he was paying to use a field that doesn't exist anymore, how, why is that still in the lease? Uh, President Hatch, Member Brown, I'm not sure I can answer that question because uh, this is just the, the lease uh, amendment. And I think at this point, uh, to my knowledge, he's only paying for the 9,012 uh, square feet of the space that was aforementioned. Oh, Mr. Brown said that he was paying for a field that doesn't exist anymore, so. Wait, excuse me. Um, I'm not sure we can do back and forth because you weren't on the agenda for a presentation. Any other questions? Okay. No, I think I'm, I'm I'm done with it tonight, but it's going to come back up. Okay. Anybody else? 
All right, hearing no more questions, it's been moved and seconded to approve item 5.5, renewal of lease with Apogee Education LLC, Bella Vista Private School as presented. All in favor say aye. 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 Opposed? Nay. Abstain? The motion carries. Item 5.5 is approved as presented. Item 5.6, renewal of lease with Bella of Fidel. Thank presented you, by Mr. Tim Leedy. Thank you, President Hatcher. Members of the board, Dr. Monroe, <clears throat> this item was also tabled at the June 15th, 2021 governing board meeting. Bella Fidel's lease for the used space at Desert Arroyo expires on June 30th, 2021. She has requested a lease renewal and the lease renewal will be for two years and will have the same terms as the lease agreement dated December 20th, 2018. The attachment represents the terms of the proposed lease agreement amendment, which will now expire on June 30th, 2023. Uh, and this amendment to the lease agreement has been approved by attorney. Uh, it, just as a footnote to this one, um, the, the rental rate on this uh, square footage is $7 a square foot and uh, this is the same square footage. It's one classroom uh, that has been the same since uh, 2019. And I believe, and there, uh, there was a, uh, I, I guess it was an unwritten agreement. Uh, well, it was written in the lease, but uh, at the time that uh, it was negotiated, it has stayed the same through the uh, 19 and the 20 uh, square footages based on uh, input that I've received from the prior administration. So uh, therefore, administration would recommend that the governing board approve the amendment to the lease agreement with Bella Fidel as presented. So moved. Second. Questions? No, no questions? I'm sorry, no, I, no. Um, it would be the same answers that we just received, so no, I have no questions on this item. Okay, anybody else? All right, hearing none, it's been moved and seconded to approve item 5.6, renewal of the lease with Bella Fidel as presented. All in favor say aye. 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 Opposed? Abstain? I, I want to explain my aye vote, though. Um, I'm, I am. I understand what uh, Member Brown is saying, and I think he brings up some really good points. Um, I voted I because I think uh, Bella Vista has acted in good faith, and I think that uh, perhaps the district needs to uh, do some investigation in the next couple of years before the lease comes up again. So, under those circumstances, I'm voting I. Um, the motion carries. Item 5.6 is approved as presented. Item 5.7, approval of the gifted uh, scope and sequence presented by Dr. Court Monroe. President Hatcher, members of the board, this uh, item was tabled at the June 15th governing board meeting. It's being brought back to the board for approval this evening. This was uh, the item where I, I had uploaded an older version of the document. So the current document that the board has has been reformatted so that the bottom few tables would appear. All the board's concerns were updated and there was another sentence that was added to the effective needs portion as well. As required by districts participating in the Elementary and Secondary Education Act, Cave Creek Unified is required to complete a self-assessment annually to ensure that programs are in compliance with all applicable statutes, regulations, and applications. As part of the Cycle 5 monitoring, which is what we're in right now, the instrument for ESEA, the board will be asked to approve this revised gifted scope and sequence. So the administration would recommend that the government board take the following action and approve the gifted scope and sequence as presented. So moved. Second. Questions? Discussion? All right, hearing none, it's been moved and seconded to approve item 5.7, uh, approval of the gifted scope and sequence as presented. All in favor say aye. 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 Opposed? Abstain? Motion carries. Item 5.7 is approved as presented. Item 6, old business, 6.1, approval of the district budget for 2021-2022, presented by Mr. Tim Leedy, and is this your last presentation? <laughs> this is my last presentation, my last two, Ron. 
Thank you, President Hatcher, members of the board, Dr. Monroe. Uh, the budget being presented for adoption has not changed since it was proposed on June 15th. The notice of public hearing and the budget summary were both posted on June 16th, 2021 on the Arizona Department of Education's website and a link for the Arizona Department of Education website was posted on June 16th as well on the CCUSD webpage. Um, as I mentioned in the agenda item on June 15th, uh, this, this budget that you have before you tonight is basically just in compliance with the dates uh, for submitting the budget and once the legislature completes the legislative cycle and we get the final information as far as the uh, per student amounts and, and the other allocations uh, for capital on September 15th or on or before September 15th, um, Ms. Rodriguez will be bringing you a budget to uh, capture those new numbers and we're estimating somewhere in the range of about a half million dollars that it will go up uh, and, and again, that will depend on the student count as well. So um, the administration would recommend that the governing board adopt the 2021-2022 budget as presented. So moved. Second. Questions? Um, can you just please scoot that page up? I just want to make sure those dates are, that one, uh, those two dates are correct. The, those oh, dates were changed. I I did. Um, well, no, th these were the uh, where we posted it. So it will be posted tomorrow. Uh, and I for the signature page when you're discussing the evaluation, I can go get the signature page and replace it for the adopted budget. So rather than uh, July 28th, it'll say June 28th. That's yeah. correct. Okay, thank right. you. All right. Uh, any more questions for Mr. Leedy? All right, hearing none, it's been moved and seconded to approve item 6.1, approval of the district budget for 2021-2022 as presented. All in favor say aye. 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 Opposed? Abstained? The motion carries. Item 6.1 is approved as presented. Item 7, future agenda items, there are none. Item 8, executive session. Per ARS 38-431.03.A, Point one, discussion or consideration of employment, assignment, appointment, promotion, demotion, dismissal, salaries, disciplining or resignation of a public officer, appointee or employee of any public body, except that with the exception of salary discussions, an officer, appointee or employee may demand that the discussion or consideration occur at a public meeting. Superintendent's summative evaluation and discuss discussion regarding performance-based pay. So I move to recess the public meeting and move into executive session for the purpose of discussing Dr. Monroe's summative evaluation and performance-based pay. Is there a second? Second. second. All in favor say aye. 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 Opposed? Abstain? The motion carries. The governing board will move into executive session. Let's get out here. Okay, we are reconvening the business meeting for the purpose of extending past nine o'clock, and we will then move back into executive session. So um, I'll make a motion to um, extend, reconvene, extend past nine o'clock. And uh, is there a second? So moved. Okay. All in favor? Aye. 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 Opposed? Abstain. Motion carries. We are uh, extending past nine and going back into an executive executive session. So, President Hatcher, we'll need to we'll need to motion to go back okay. into executive session. So, is there a motion to go back into an executive session? So moved. All right. Is there a second? Second. All right. All in favor, say aye. 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 Opposed? Abstain. Motion carries. We'll move back into executive session. Does anybody need a five-minute break? <laughs>
That's what we're, that's what we're about to do. All right, I'd like to make a motion to adjourn the executive session and move back into public meeting. Is there a second? Second. Okay. All in favor say aye. 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 Opposed? Abstain? Motion carries. Public meeting will now resume, except we're going to take a five minute break. Or however much you want to take a restroom break. Okay. Anybody want a break? Hey, I already. Oh, all right. Okay, so we don't need one then, right? Okay. All right. Um, I thought we already did. Yeah. Okay. Um, all right, so I make a motion to reopen the business meeting. Second. Okay. All in favor say aye. 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 Opposed? Abstain. Motion carries. We are back into the regular meeting. My, my vote was an aye, but I had a mouthful of water. Sorry. <laughs> <laughs> okay. So, item nine. Approval of a performance-based pay plan for the superintendent pursuant to ARS section 15-341A-39. And I'm going to read the background. Pursuant to ARS Section 15-341A-39 and the superintendent's contract, the governing board has the opportunity to assess the performance of the superintendent and award performance-based pay as follows. The governing board shall assess superintendent's performance on an annual basis to determine whether to abor sorry, award the superintendent any performance-based pay. Such assessment shall incur in conjunction with the superintendent's evaluation. The governing board shall review the goals listed for the superintendent in the superintendent's evaluation and substantial progress towards meeting the agreed upon goals of the district in making that determination. The governing board shall, shall evaluate the superintendent and assess any award of performance-based pay for the superintendent no later than June 30th of each contract year. If a majority of the board members present and conducting the performance assessment agree that the superintendent has earned performance-based pay, then they shall vote to issue some or all of his performance-based pay subject to availability of funds. Under the superintendent's contract of employment, the board may award up to 10% of the superintendent's base pay. Any award would be in addition to the superintendent's base salary. So the recommendation is that the governing board approve and take the following action. I move that the governing board award the superintendent performance base pay in the amount not to exceed $7,750, which is 0.5 of the 10%. It's the total he's eligible for right now. Is there a second? Second. All right, discussion. Um, Mr. Leedy, I have a question for you. In that third paragraph, it says subject to availability of funds. So are funds available, and if so, from what source? Uh, President Hatcher, members of the board, uh, Dr. Monroe, yes, there are funds available, and it's in the, uh, it's budgeted in the uh, superintendent salary line within the maintenance and operation budget. Okay, thank you. Um, the reason why I suggest that amount, which is the full amount, is because I'm not going to relitigate what we did in there for probably two and a half hours. Um, uh, I believe the bottom line is that Dr. Monroe deserves it. Um, he has walked into a situation and uh, met his goals um, under very tough circumstances. Um, I believe that he is the leader that we need. Um, I believe that he will move us forward in a positive manner. I believe that he's a, a, an extremely hard worker. Um, in the military, uh, my son got combat pay when he was active duty. Well, in my book, Dr. Monroe deserves combat pay if we could award it. So um, I, I vote to give him the full amount that he is due. I have a question, and the first line in this, it says the governing board shall assess superintendent's performance on an annual basis. Well, he's only been here six months, 
So how is that considered annual? If, is that why the it's the 5% instead of 10% of his base pay since it's just, I think it goes by fiscal year probably for government, which ends yeah. June 30th. Well, uh, yeah, so, but we're not a, he's only been here half a year. Right, so we're, we're just assessing based on six months. Okay. You know, yeah. Okay. Yeah, we wouldn't do this again in six months. We would wait now. Till the He's next on cycle year. now, so yeah. it'll be Til this next time next year. June. Mm -hmm. Yeah, there that will would be an be evaluation that. in December, but not one with pay attached to it. Yeah, correct, Member uh, Member Busby. Uh, Member Brown is right. The kind of the normal cycle starts this year, but there's the legal consulted on the contract language and how the contract was written is why it happened this way um, this year with only six months. Is there any more discussion? I would just have to say I agree with uh, how things have gone. Uh, tough decisions had to be made. Uh, we've been working under uh, a lot of uh, very interesting and unique times and these decisions have been made uh, with the district in mind. That's what we've asked, uh, that was what was asked of him when he was hired. Uh, and so uh, I would agree with that. Anyone else? Oh, I, um, I would agree as well. I think it was that just the timing had to be very reactive and I think you handled it with good leadership and so I agree as well. Yeah, as it's been said, obviously uh, changing in midstream or in a mid school year is not easy on a normal school year and we knew going into uh, when we were searching for the new superintendent, we knew there was going to be some obstacles. Um, and we were, the, the three of us that were on the board at the time, I think we were very clear uh, to all the people we interviewed. And uh, I think everybody realized what we were looking at, obviously, starting in January uh, with the uh, COVID issues. And then we knew our district, obviously, we were going to have some uh, you know, a rather large budget issue looking at us. So um, has everything gone according to plan? No, probably not. But does it ever? No, probably not. I think uh, a lot of changes probably had to be made or would have been made, maybe got accelerated because of the COVID. So uh, is the district going to be better in the long run? Yes, I believe it is. Uh, new people in new positions, bringing new energy to our schools and passing that energy down through our teachers to our students, I think is a, is a great, um, you know, we expect a lot of that and I think that's what's going to happen. Uh, I'm anxious to see uh, the new group, the new leadership team, the new principals uh, get on campus and start uh, implementing their uh, plans and uh, charging up the staff and charging up the teachers and welcoming our students back in, what do we say, 38 days or something like that. It's gonna be here before we know it. So uh, a lot of work has been done and a lot of work still uh, to be done. But I think we've got the, uh, we've stepped off into the right, going in the right direction, so. I appreciate everything Dr. Monroe has brought uh, to the board and to the district, and I think uh, will benefit our students in the long run, and that's the important part. Oh, I, I agree with what everybody has said. You know, Dr. Monroe really walked into a firestorm, and I think combat pay is probably a pretty appropriate way to define it. Um, it. It's never easy being the guy coming in midstream and to walk into a situation where, it, you know, we all of the things that collided at once, we had COVID, we had a budget issue, 
um, and he comes in on the heels of a superintendent that had been here for a number of years. It's not the perfect environment to start a new job. And, you know, he was under the gun, and in very short order, there were a lot of things that had to be addressed. And, you know, he, he did a good job. I mean, he's, he's trying to, to set the ship on a, an appropriate course that's going to take us above and beyond where we've been and you know I appreciate that and I appreciate the professionalism that he's done it with okay, thank you all right so it's been moved and seconded to award the superintendent performance based pay in the amount of seven thousand seven hundred fifty dollars all those in favor say aye aye, aye. opposed abstain the motion carries. Performance-based pay will be awarded in the amount of $7,750. Item 10, adjournment. Is there a motion to adjourn the work-study special meeting? So moved. Second. It's been moved and seconded to adjourn the meeting. All in favor say aye. 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 Opposed? Abstain? Motion carries. Meeting is adjourned.